This session is sponsored by Access Design, the makers of Anima, the all-in-one crowd management tool developed to make the process of adding 3D people to your still images and animations fast and easy. Find out more about Anima and their 3D people library by clicking on their link or banner in the show notes. Hello everyone and welcome to The Spectrum. I'm your host Ronan Beckerman and this is session number 6. This week I'm joined by Jacob Czech from Slovakia. He's well known on the blog and worked with architects like Graham Coolhouse and Isai Weinfeld. This session comes out after a period of one year in which Jacob took time off to create a collection of 30 images in a book called Beautiful Computer Generated Images. An effort that recently culminated with a new website and a brand called Esim. We'll discuss how he started with CGI, Alex Roman, the phone call from Watson and Company that made a big change, and more. Here we go, everyone. Session number six with Jacob Check. Let's roll. Hello, Jacob. Uh, it's really nice to have you here on the spectrum and uh, to get started comfortably, I would really love to uh, introduce you, but uh, let you introduce yourself. So uh, tell us who you are, a little bit of your background before we get started. Sure. So hello, Ronan. Thank you so much for in my, inviting me to do this interview with you. And to start, I would love to say that I'm a Slovakia-born CGI digital fine art artist. And I'm excited to <laughs> make this interview with you. <laughs> cool. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the background. Well, what was it that uh, got you into the this position that you are in today? And, uh, you know, uh, educational background, experience, work experience. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can, you know, uh, learn a little bit more about you. Okay, so I guess it looks like history. So first of all, I've always felt like different a bit in, in terms of what I what I see in uh, CGI and, you know, 3D renderings. I thought I, I liked and saw different things beautiful than other people uh, and was very uncertain person about anything, life, taste, everything, so uncertain. And later on, I found out why, but, uh, and I was always very logical and technical person, like computers, Lego, and so on. And more of a antisocial person, thanks God, thanks God I sorted that out uh, later on. And okay. all my life I struggled in 3D with, with the most disturbing thing about any 3D artwork, the... Uh, CG, CG-ish look and actually I started to fall in love with 3D when I was 14 years old and first first spark that you know was there was when I saw just a pure viewport of 3ds Max because I found it so so like astonishing that I can see you know 3D inside 2D panel, like you can see through the monitor and inside a 3D space. Yeah. What What year was that uh, when you were 14? Well, so it's 2017. Now I'm 25, so that would be 11, uh, 11 year, no. years. No. Yes. So that would be 2006, right? Yeah. So that was my first spark, and you know, first touch with. 3D. We had very, very slow internet connection, I remember. So I got my friend to download 3DS Max and I didn't know how to do anything in it. Uh, so I thought it was faulty and like left 3D for one year after. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes, this was the first spark. And, and then, then I created uh, my first model, which was Tractor, Voltra. Because you know, I and my father went went to grab some food for uh, for our chickens, 
and there was this like nice uh, tractor. So, you know, I just got excited and model it like totally into detail. And it was 2009, this first modeling, like huge experience. Th this is the year that it started to, you know, elevate a bit, a bit faster. And then I created my Coca-Cola artwork and so on and so on. And I was very uncertain, it was on and off on, on 3D a lot because because I couldn't get that quality I, I wanted. I, my, my eye was, were very, very like strict at that time. And, and my skill and experience was very little. So I was very like often, you know, falling into depression because I just couldn't do something I, I couldn't do because I didn't know how to do that, but I wanted it to look like in my hand hat and I couldn't get it so I was very on and off on this and uh, then um, my, that, my that was during uh, you were like you know in, sc in school and you were doing this as a hobby right I mean that was like uh, that, that time right uh, yes that's okay. correct I was at a time when I was uh, maybe 17 that would be High school, yes. Yeah, it was just my hobby. The yes. Yeah. Well, what what did you start learning? Uh, you know, when did you go to you, you go to college, right? I mean, after the high school, you went to study. Yes, um, my high school was uh, well. How you say this in English? It was electricity and informatics high school. Okay. And because I was always into technical stuff, computers, Lego, and programming, all that kind of thing. And so that was, but the high school was mainly focused on electronics. And then when I went to college, it was Technical University of Kashice. And the, I attended informatics and started programming a lot, which, which, is, which is really hand in hand with uh, 3D rendering algorithms and techniques. And this helps me to understand them much, much, much more deeper and so on, because I also read a lot of technical papers and this all like connected, uh, you know, bo uh, bowls because 3D is based on algorithms. They are based on programming and so on. So I didn't actually study art or anything about 3D. This was my passion, but okay. I started programming, which I would not normally do. And this helped a lot in, in, this, in this my 3D path. Okay. So wh wh how, how did you came to, to actually... Uh, you you didn't do anything with this informatics education, right? I mean, or or did you? Uh, like for commercial purposes? Yeah, I mean, uh, how how long was uh, was the the degree, or uh, how many years did you study informatics? Uh, well, I studied informatics for five years. Okay. And uh, actually, there was nothing commercial I did about it. But but I enjoyed it. It's technical. I, I really loved it. And, and my bachelor and final thesis were a lot connected with 3D. And because my bachelor 3D, uh, my bachelor work was 3D reconstruction from photos. And my final thesis was about Oculus positional tracking. So so again, something regarding yeah. 3D with programming, but no commercial stuff regarding programming. Okay. So when when was it that you decided or maybe it wasn't like a conscious decision but when when did when did you actually start to do visualization as uh, as your work uh, something you know to make a living out of Yeah. Yes. Oh well, again, when during my high school it was only passion. I was a lot on and off. And then I think it was 2012 where when my friend, you know, just asked me that he has, he had a client here in Slovakia who wanted to visual, visualize um, children uh, playrooms furniture. So, you know, I just, I just said, okay. And, and this is my first commercial job, like uh, for visualization. And the first picture I did uh of whole children's room with all the furniture uh the price for it for it was four euro yes okay <laughs> so that's that's where it started 
uh, the first job. Yes, I I mean I I didn't know it was you know like job because I I just wanted to do it because it was a challenge. I was very uh, young at that age, I think eighteen, and you know just didn't didn't want to do this. I didn't know that I'm going to do that for a living. I just took the job because I liked doing that, and you know this was my first job, and then uh then in 2013 i finally uh did something that i really liked uh to look at because i found out this kind of technique to color map image differently the first project that had it was was my uh dreaming of stickers and i was so 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 much uh enthusiastic about it and then created four projects in a row based on this mapping because i finally found something that i liked that okay. th this was what i struggled a lot and this then led into uh american a uh, new york based agency wetson and company to get in touch with me in 2013 and i got the first huge commercial job which was uh which was the sullivan so sullivan. it was yes it was like you know, incredible jump start from 2012 from from this little company here to to in one year to New York based Watson and Company already getting really really beautiful and let's say high society project uh, okay. because because they saw you know this my those personal projects that I was so enthusiastic about because I found something I really liked so I was oh, very so happy. Where where did they see the, this work that you did? How well, how did they find you? Well, honestly, I don't know. At a time, I had uh, mainly two channels. That was my official website and also Behance profile. So okay. one of those. I and I honestly think it was the Behance. Behance one, right? I think. okay. So ha ha. What did they say when they first contacted you? <laughs> well, I I didn't. Uh, I mean, I don't know which project called. The, their eyes but it was just a typical day and suddenly my my phone rang i just you know sat, sat in slovakia hello and you know it was american voice and and they they just approached me this way they didn't send email they they just directly called called you yes yeah. so i was <laughs> cool. shocked but again this was beautiful thing that uh, happened to me because at a time uh it, i think it, i was 18 or maybe 19 i already had uh english state uh exams which is the highest like normally uh you can learn learnish grade of english uh so it was very very uh, fortunate situation and i and i could already you know speak fluently uh, in english and we yeah. you know just did the first project because Otherwise, it's it's very very you know there there's a huge struggle to just do a project with someone that doesn't speak or doesn't you know just communicate that well. So again, huge fortune that I went uh, to this uh, language school during my high school. Okay, and uh, was it working remotely or did they ask you to you know to come over there? So first, first they wanted to try me. So we didn't, we didn't do Solomon. We we did one uh, like example rendering because they wanted to check, you know, if 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 I'm if I'm really what what I am. So we did like different project, and I just did one rendering for them, and you know they they were happy about it, and then we did the Solomon project, and we did it fully remotely. Okay. Uh, how long did it take to do that test? <laughs> well, yes, at that time I didn't know how how the things, you know, just go. Usually okay. in in New York, because projects just tend to last months, even years, and and I didn't know that. And then we had like so many re revisions. We had it, it took like maybe I don't know eight months or. Ah, uh, we're actually working on the project on the server. Um, no, no. The test. No, 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 no. I mean, so. it took eight months to finish the renderings, but I didn't, you know, just uh, work on them every day. It, it just okay. lasted so long because, you know, they had a lot of revisions. But at the time, it was very fortunate for me as well because 
I, I, I didn't knew at a time how to do many things properly, even how to understand my mapping properly. And, and, you know, just being with them for some, for such a long time, it helped me a lot to, to see things that I didn't see because they saw them. So for me, it was fortunate that it took so long. Okay. Okay. So we can, we can uh, come back to that and the experience of working, uh, working with this kind of, uh, company. Uh, but before that, uh, as you, I, I assume that was like the, 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 the actual professional beginning of your architecture visualization career, right? I mean, that, that totally, that, yes, that job offer, right? Yes. Uh, and it was also like fire, fire starts start because the main image of the building made it into New York papers at the time. So it was like a huge jump start for me. Yeah, I think I think it was. I don't know if it was your first image that I uh, kind of captured my attention, but it definitely I think got best of week the week it was posted on yes on the on the blog, right? Yes, uh, it did. That 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 courtyard image with the trees and the table. Yes, that's uh, it. With the little yeah. fontaine on on the squarish yeah, yeah, stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I think that yeah for sure that was the one that kind of like uh, that was the first time I connected your name with with an image uh, being posted on my blog and I've been actively following you ever since I think. Um, so I mean, if if that project had not come at that point in time, were you already uh, you know did you already decide that you are going to be an architectural visualizer or did that project kind of like made a decision for you? Well, I I never never asked that question because I I didn't, you know, my always my main goal was not to, you know, become like a architectural visual, visualizer or something like that. My main goal was always to do a picture that I'm going to like. And this was the biggest struggle. And I, I think the the break point uh, was also this project because uh, it 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 really showed me that hey this is a really really nice way of of using my passion for something that you know can can pay the bills can you know be really helpful for for someone and so I mean for the breakpoints i would say one breakpoint was finding the core mapping because at a time i said this is my last project if it doesn't look good i'm quitting and it looked good so this was one breakpoint and this was uh, the sullivan project was another breakpoint that told me hey this is a way to go so so yes it, it was it was the breakpoint at 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 when i realized hey i can i can be visualizer and i can use my passion to you know to work so yes it was a break point okay so th that leads us very nicely into the why you are doing what it is that you are doing so uh you said something like uh my passion is to create an image that i like uh yes <laughs> kind of like your <laughs> ultimate goal so is that really uh, what it comes down to that's that's your main passion and, and, and drive to create an image that you personally like and this is like the things you measure everything based off on uh, well, are there any other kinds of, of, of uh, motivations uh, giving you know myself as an example I'm doing visualization because that's my way to uh, to um, to fulfill my, uh, you know, architectural design mm -hmm. passion. So I'm in visualization mm -hmm. because of the architecture. So uh, when I get uh, clients calling me and, and ask for me to do visualizations, and the first thing I ask is, okay, well, what's the project? Mm -hmm. uh, where is it at? Uh, I'm trying to, you know, imagine what, if it's a if it's a house. Where's the location? Uh, I'm I'm starting to think about the architecture before I even think about, you know, making images. Uh, mm -hmm. so th that's how it is for me so, but, but for you um, and I, I studied architecture uh, 
for a while. So, but 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 you didn't study architecture. Yes, you don't. You don't come from that field. You you came from something else entirely. Uh, yes. So, can you expand a little bit about you know your goals and challenges, things you like and dislike in this kind of you know realm? Sure. Well, as yeah, it comes down to what what I what I said that I always felt different because. I, I'm in this field of architectural visualization, but I I really it really comes down to what 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 I what I like and I feel I like total different things. And usually, you know, people are about this uh architectural beauty and all this stuff. But for my eyes it's it's about like colors and how lighting works and about how plain areas are are lit and the gradients and minimalism i i just like totally different elements in the picture than than i think most of people does and so the the deep why inside me is is kind of rooted in in me liking these elements in the picture okay Probably, I would say this way. It's not like about liking uh, actual architecture, but about liking those elements of art, uh, artistic lighting, of artistic colors, and you know, just, just, and it doesn't have to be even you know architecture. Many, many of my uh, renderings does not, uh, you know, have architecture in them. Even the, even the one of my last projects is. For example, car. So it comes down to those elements, and um, then regarding challenges. Well, the uh, challenge again, it comes down to what I like was always for me to create something that I liked because because I felt that I didn't like anything I created. So this was always the biggest challenge for me, and is still now because. I mostly don't like what what I create, but sometimes it does, and and it you know by the time I learn, it gets more and more. So that's that's a huge challenge regarding regarding this deep rooted passion. I think if 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 this is what what uh, what we're talking about. Also, there are another challenges like studio and so on. But uh, regarding the question, I think this this would be the most fitting answer. Okay. Oh, uh, well, that that oh, that. And it leads us uh, again very nicely into uh, uh, something that I ask any guest on on the spectrum, which is, uh, let's say you get stuck in an elevator with, with, with your dream client. So that dream okay. client could be, you know, for the purposes of this example, the Watson and Company. Okay, but like the first time you meet the the guy or the, you know the girl that called you, and you're in an ele elevator right now. So you have 30 seconds to try to convince them. Uh, that you are the one they need to do their next visualization project. So what would you say, you know, mm -hmm. during that short okay. elevator ride? So CEO of Watson and Company is William. So let's say it's William. And, and so let's say the dream client is William. And I would probably say, hey, William, you know, since my young age, I've been into computer graphics and portrayed imaginary places, portrayed architecture, and so on. And, you know, I always tried to represent my own taste in it. I tried to make my artworks very unique in terms of lighting, colors, arrangement, and overall make the image look very artistic and captivating. So one would love to hang it on the wall just as a piece of art. And I know that you design beautiful brochures that you have beautiful clients so if you would like to it would be really nice to create something together cool that wasn't 30 seconds but that was really <laughs> really focused one <laughs> okay yeah and different uh from what would someone you know think you should say architecture visualization is not something easy to describe for someone who never heard about you know yes about it before well great this was a great pitch it's a nice uh it's a nice way to wrap up the uh you know the 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 beginning or like the history and go into 
the processes and, 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 and workflows that you defined in the, in the way you create your work. So in terms of how you feel about what it is you do, I think you, you are more artistically inclined, right? I mean, you, you consider the thing that you do as a work of art that's mm-hmm. servicing a uh, commercial pro- purpose, but it's essentially art, right? Yes. What is your approach for crafting visualizations? So if we stay within the context of architecture and you can take like, a, you know, an, an example project, what's your approach from the beginning through, mm. the, through the process all the way towards finishing and delivering the final images to the client? And I, you, you, you're strictly doing still images, right? You, you never done animations. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, I, that's so... because I, I feel that, uh, you know, there's still space for me to, to improve and still. So I, I, you know, just position myself inside uh, on, on, on a line like, okay, let's do with still images the best I can, then I can move to animation. But, but probably that might change in time because I cannot always, you know, decide uh, not to ch- take animation project so i think this is going to change okay so um, if you can describe your uh, your process your approach if it's different from client to client from project to project or mm-hmm. is it something which is pretty much uh, similar or consistent throughout so mm-hmm. how, how do you start well i honestly uh, didn't have as many different clients i had maybe 3 or 4 clients in my career the biggest and um, i think best suitable one was watson and company then i also did project for noe and associatives and also here in slovakia so that's that's all that you know i can compare like regarding workflow yeah uh, so but i would i would concentrate on these new york based studios because that's where i'm going to work probably uh even even now so the the workflow would be first of all understanding the project and th- this is fortunate because i work with uh, this creative agency and they you know make all these boards and mood boards and all this stuff so first of all i would love to i want to understand where it's going to be situated, what a history is, and, you know, inspirations for mood and for all this stuff, just to, for me to understand what we are portraying and what, uh, what people were trying to target. So that would be the first step of the f- workflow. And then I got, I got all the files and all the direction uh from from the agency from architects it's pretty standard process i think uh so and, and we collaborate on direction a lot so this is something really nice uh, that i'm not uh, just a company of uh, cg people cgi people yeah. but that i'm collaborating with creative designers and so on and together we we shift direction into a bit different different uh you know directions <laughs> so that's what we work on together and then then i i usually uh model the model myself but i don't like that much modeling because that's not what i would love to concentrate it uh, on so i sometimes just hire some studio to make the modeling and i can concentrate off on materials composition lighting and so on and uh that's where this direction comes to. So with all these variables, I try to build build a whole image. And there are a lot of revisions. Uh, there are a lot of comments uh, and so on. But I, I feel I feel it's it always like more of a enrichment for me to understand their point of views and their comments. So I'm not like super mad about it. I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to learn about a lot from it and that's that's how the image is done (laughs) okay and is it is it only you when you work with this with these clients is it only you doing the work from start to finish apart from maybe you know outsourcing modeling 
mm-hmm. a bit. But you are in charge of the entire image creating process. There's no one yes. else that you're working collaboratively with in, in, in the image making, right? No, no, okay. it's not. Okay. So uh, what, what, what are the average time frames that you usually work on when you work with these clients uh, to, to create a, an image? How, how, how much do you work, you know, from start to finish, you know, with all the revisions in between uh, mm-hmm. weeks, months? Well, I can say that, for example, okay, let's let's take one client from Slovakia, one from America, because that's different uh, workflows of revision. So, so you, it's going to be more like objective to say how long it it lasts here and how long it lasts in America. So, okay. for example, in America, I can have a project with let's say twelve pictures. Um, mixed, most of them interiors, some of them exteriors, and we might work on it for, let's say, six, seven, eight months. Okay. Uh, but not, you know, not all the time. That's because it just takes so much time for them, for them to review, to change something, and so on. Uh, so, so that's how long it takes there. And we have maybe like, uh, let's say, 10 rounds of revisions okay. but then let's say we have a project from Slovakia like I had and there there were 10 pictures and we did them in six weeks of non-stop working okay so that that's that's the let's say the probable time frame for 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 my uh, project okay and uh okay so i think i think i know which 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 one you like better to work on but uh yes. does the budget change i mean it's the same amount of images but obviously you work way more on on even though you have probably you know like uh, gaps in between revisions so you probably do other things you know, yes as you wait but uh in terms of budgeting do you budget projects uh Similarly, or you you make the differentiation based on what you said, like uh, yes. Uh, so, mm-hmm. well, uh, yes, the budget is much uh, much higher for for more revisions and more time. This session is sponsored by Quixel, the makers of Mega Scans. Quixel is on a mission to scan the world, offering us an all-encompassing library that we've dreamed for so long. You've heard the story by Quixel founder Teddy Bergsman in session number three. If you didn't yet, you should. Visit the Megascans library by clicking on their link or banner in the show notes and explore their full environment packs and individual assets you can use on your next project. Okay, so if you, if we can we can jump now back to what you mentioned before. So the first project you did with Watson Company was the Sullivan, right? Yes. In a, in a previous discussion we had, you you mentioned the fact, and I think you also mentioned it during the interview, uh, that working with this kind of company, which is a branding agency essentially, they they do a full spectrum for for a client. It's not just the images; it's it's mm-hmm. everything. It's branding. So mm-hmm. you you come into contact with various uh, disciplines and people that do various things within the uh, within the agency. So how is that enriching your own uh, technique, your own view on on the process? I think you mentioned something like topography before, uh, and how that sparked mm-hmm. like an interest uh, in how they actually pick which font goes with with with, with the color on, mm-hmm. on what page so what what does that bring in into your process after you experience this kind mm-hmm. of of work uh yes yeah, so first to mention I would like to say that I have never worked in uh one office with multiple c g i uh people okay. and for, uh, I also worked in uh, Watson and company physically for three months we didn't 
collaborate only remotely. I I was there for three months and uh, I was there with, in one room with, as you said, a lot of different types of uh, people regarding their job with uh, designers, with typography designers, with uh, a lot of different people because uh, because this agency produces websites, brochures, and everything together. And that's and and this this period of time where I was physically inside Watson was very very intense in terms of me growing in uh, in uh, inside because there I learned, as you said, something about typography, something about taste making, something about high society, multiple disciplines. And this was very, very enriching for me. And I was not looking at a picture only from the point of view I had before, like only color or only light, but also from point of view of how, how it, I also went on meetings there. So then I could actually think of what they would say, what they would not like, and what they would like, and and uh, why they would like this, why they would not like this. And from the beginning, I didn't understand it. But then it, I, I just absorbed all of this, and it helped me to really widen my point of view so, so much. And all in all, it, so, it helps so much in crafting the image because having multiple point of views is really very, very helpful. So now I know, hey, this is too saturated. Hey, this waist just is, is not something that, uh, you know, is suitable for a stable and, uh, oh, this composition would, would, for example, not work for them. But I know that it's, uh, I know from my, 3D experience that this composition is good and this is my personal project so I can keep it they would not like it and and it helped me to widen so much the the point of views and th this this is so so helpful in in terms of workflow for creation of the image it's so so helpful yeah that that does sound like an experience anyone should strive to have this yes, you know, one way I, I, or another um, totally yeah but yeah. i mean you're mostly working solo right i mean apart from those periods of time that you either work uh, on location or like remotely with someone mm -hmm. but you're, you're mostly a solo artist right yes uh, there are a lot of us that, that that are working kind of the same as you do but others are uh, either a part of a studio as employees others are uh, managing their own team so mm -hmm. anyone should probably think how he can uh, enrich his own experience with being in contact with people outside of his own mm -hmm. you know comfort zone uh, so that's really nice to hear about uh, the experience you had in terms of the the toolbox that you have right like today what are the tools you're using to create your uh, your art in terms of modeling, rendering, post-production, mm -hmm. what's your tool set? And obviously it's it's geared towards making still images. So mm -hmm. uh, what, what are you using today? So my current tool toolbox is uh, based on 3ds Max as a main 3D package. Although I would love to change it. It's just something we cannot change, right? <laughs> okay, so I can ask why you'd like to change. Uh, well, because I feel that many, many time I, I find myself struggling with something that is pretty, I would say, easy to do, but I'm struggling with it because of, of, of the way that this, this particular software is designed. Okay. So, yes. Did you try, did you try something else, you know, just to, you know, test it for size? Uh, I, I, I didn't because, because, uh, when I, when I did the review, I didn't find the tools I wanted to use or didn't find as, as you know, evolved. I mean, all because it's connected with the rendering engine and, and I see that, that all rendering engines are always first uh, aimed for 3ds Max. And if there are versions for other uh, 3D packages, then these versions are always lower. 
the kind uh, of y- yes and have less features so you know always the newest features are for 3s max and as i would love to be the avant-garde artist so experimental and new i i really would love to have you know the technology just as it's out and and you know just try to experiment with it do something new with it and that's that's why the 3s max is the only Solu- uh, solution to be avant-garde and have the latest technology that comes out okay so that's probably why you're using the render engine that you're using right now right uh yes i'm using corona rendering engine yeah. um and uh, mm, i used to use v-ray uh but i w- I, I didn't first of all f- uh, i always based my uh choosing of software based on the output like i liked v- how we ray they had really nice images on the website so i tr- i was using that and then when the corona came out and i think uh, bertrand benoit just made images in there so i knew that it's possible to do you know great renderings in there so so i tried it and and i liked it so so far i'm i'm using using it till now and then mm, that's the main combo i'm using then i'm doing a little bit of post production in photoshop or in after effects using plugins like magic bullet looks or nick collection and uh, one one uh, of very important tools in my gearbox is pinterest <laughs> i know okay. it's not a software but i would i would really love to involve it into into the gearbox so that's the main gearbox yeah that that serves as your uh, main inspiration point right yes i i think it's it's just the most uh, sophisticated beautiful uh sophisticated source of beautiful images in one place and and the way that it follows your interest is is just something you know you just open one picture that you like and there's going to be billions of other that that you're going to like because it knows it knows how to connect yeah you can waste hours by by just you know <laughs> waste searching for the first <laughs> image and then you look at the watch and it's like whoa three hours later and i'm i'm still on pinterest well yes for my latest series uh, of of uh, of projects i actually wasted two months doing pinterest so pinterest. <laughs> okay uh, so you're referring to the ones i think three three installments you've all, already published right on the blog on the showcase section uh, uh yes the, the kitchen, beautiful computer generated yeah. images series yeah so what 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 what's the what's the purpose behind those uh, i think you have seven of these right Uh yes, it's going to be seven of those all together. Uh t- till now there are five of projects out. And uh again the the very the first spark of of this idea uh was created in 2014 during my physical visit in the Watson and Company. And since since then it just kept growing in, in inside inside me and it, it's it's something like an every every artist does something for for you know, your personal projects yeah. and then do some commercial just as I did before I was asked by Watson I do a few personal projects and this like kept growing inside me and turned into into this big big idea and is is mostly inspired by Alex Roman because he also took one and a half years off to do something he believed in so so it kept growing me and then i decided yes let's take one year off and and do something that i believe in okay so this is an an on and off thing you do as you work on commercial projects so no, like it's, no it's so solely one year off for off. for just this okay for just this for for the seven installments of of, of those projects that you do yes and then okay. it's going to be like a little brochure connecting them all together and and a, a new website that's all it's all covered in in this one year of having vacation but it's like working more more time that that uh compared to 
commercial projects, I work more now. <laughs> okay. So wh wh what do you hope that uh, you, you will accomplish or will happen once you finish this thing and uh, release it to, um, you know, to the wild? Well, I would, again, my main goal is for me to like it. <laughs> okay. Just as, as this, this so it's, reason, it's... I'm doing it because, you know, I have a passion to do it. That's okay. that's the deep reason. But uh, there are also other goals that I thought that might come out of it, and that's uh, that's showing uh, showing to you know our uh, 3D friends uh, maybe different uh, different uh, approaches or di different types of, uh, type of thinking. Maybe showing something uh, differently done, and you know just just uh, that that's all. Mm, how to say this that's all uh, what could happen because of it and also then uh, when one of goals of creating that is is that when it's done I would love to get back uh, to collaboration with Watson and and maybe you know bring bring people with the same passion to to me uh, so so we can maybe start. So maybe I could be, uh, become not to be solo, but we can, you know, be a company of passionate people. So that's also one of outcomes I, I would love it to create. Okay. And um, do you try to, um, as you you work out the process and, and, and throughout the creation of, of these projects, do you try to test new things? Besides the you know the image making and the art behind it, do you try to test new technologies and new techniques as you go about doing this, or do you, do you keep within you just keep your current toolbox, your current mm -hmm. uh, technique, and it's all about the result. It's not about uh, the tools you use. Uh, well, throughout this uh, this these series, I'm I'm experimenting, but not as much as I would do normally. Uh, my main experiment experimentation goes towards color mapping because I already tried tons of approaches to it, and this is something that I'm just still uh, experimenting with. But I'm not experimenting with new rendering engines uh, throughout this series because I I I really want to create it whole in uh, Corona. Uh, but so I'm definitely experimenting with the looks and approaches, uh, but not with with the software itself that much. But then after after it's done, I would love to experiment also with other uh, other software as well. What do you think about the the current uh, VR? You know, VR is the buzzword these days uh, but it <laughs> seems everywhere. it's yeah you know, it seems you are pretty much focused on doing uh uh what we essentially have been doing for for many years now i mean creating images or uh, showing you know buildings before they are being built is something that's been done for many years and it's going to mm -hmm. be done for many years forward but so do you kind of contemplate on on these kinds of things vr real time technology or you just you know keep on doing what it is you you love to do without mm -hmm. all these buzzwords um you know you're, yes. you're, not, you're not too worried about them <laughs> well uh, i think that technology is always it's always about how you use it and if you make good use of it it's going to be you know, just warmly welcomed and people are going to enjoy it. Uh, I did uh, my final thesis based on Oculus. So I had my hands on VR pretty, pretty a lot. I did some programming. I, I used it a lot. But at the same time, I, I was, I asked myself like, hey, you have a picture, you have it on billboard, you have it in newspaper. People, let's say in New York, just buy a newspaper, see the image, enjoy it. But for virtual reality, uh, it, it's it's again the point of view of my agency, I think, that I'm thinking of. So let's say you would love to sell something to a very, very uh, good client. So 
So would you hand him a VR? He would put it on his head and start looking around. Uh, you know, I don't think this this is going to be very mainstream because it it just it is just weird. It it feels it feels like something you know you 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 really don't want to uh, you don't want to grab a very very uh, great man in suit and put Oculus on his head. It's it's just something that you don't feel is tasteful or something like that. So, um, uh, it it can work. I, I'm not. I don't say it can't work. And I think that there's gonna be huge, uh, big, big improvements in VR. But in today's uh, in today's form of it, I don't think it's gonna be that main- mainstream. But it's going to evolve, it's going to maybe change shape, it's going to maybe change algorithms and how it works, and it's going to be a lot more tasteful for presentation and so on. So all in all, I I believe in this in the future, uh, but for now, I don't think that it's, it's going to become that mainstream because, you know, I, I really cannot imagine great man in suit wearing big headset on his head. Yeah, there's but too much friction involved in, in you know, getting... It's kind not that kind of. It, it, it needs to be something that he doesn't need to put on his head. Maybe it works just something, you know, magically. It's it's all about the form and how, how you see and perceive it. So I believe in this and I really enjoyed Oculus. Uh, but I for for this high uh, society purposes, it need to, it need to be done really well we, and and i haven't seen a, a form that i would say hey this is going to be a new a new newspaper or something like that what if i ask you that you put on a vr headset and use it as you work inside 3ds max and corona so if you have that vr <laughs> headset on okay. your head and you have interactive rendering stereo interactive rendering you know with the uh, okay with with, with with little latency so that you know you can move your head around and things like respond pretty fast what, what, what would that be like i mean what do you think about this kind of uh, mm-hmm. experience working <laughs> inside vr so if you look at a chair if you move a table if you look around you're inside the space that you are currently modeling texturing mm-hmm. you know lighting rendering is that something that you think is more usable is that is that the actual thing we need to think about mm-hmm. instead of instead of what the clients do with vr okay what are we doing with vr that can leverage mm-hmm. what it is we do maybe not us as the 3d visualizers maybe the architect maybe the architect mm-hmm. should put the vr headset on his head as as he designs the space mm-hmm. i mean i think pers- personally i think this is the thing we should focus on instead of mm-hmm. uh, thinking about the clients in VR, maybe we should as so the So you, you mean involving Oculus in more of a, a creation process, not in, yeah. in designing. Design. Yeah, maybe more design, designing process in VR. Well, first of all, I, I probably would quit after two hours because of <laughs> headache. <laughs> so I, 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 would, I could not be <laughs> doing that for 12 hours. No, but this is this is just a joke. But um, this is something I really I think that I would need to try to judge. I think it might be really beautiful, but I can't say I I would really need to try it. But yeah. I but it can, I I definitely would love to say that it can help so much. Maybe it can't, but I think possibilities are there. Definitely, yes. Cool. Okay, so in terms of, I mean, let me touch on the on the point of like focusing on still images because many 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 feel like, like that the still images is not enough today. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. to to do more than just still images. So if you have an advice to give someone starting out, someone that you know thinks that still images is not enough and he thinks he needs mm-hmm. to um, add stuff to his. Uh, offering for clients what would you say that Mm -hmm. can reassure him or what would you say that can open up their mind uh, so they know they they have many many more things to do Mm -hmm. uh, with just you know still images so 
what would be like a tip you can give them or a thought they can uh, you know pursue uh in that regard um so do you want me now to encourage to use still images or encourage to use different technologies uh no i mean you said like uh, you said that you personally haven't you know yet figured out or like uh solved mm-hmm. doing the still image there's so many things that you uh, still mm-hmm. think you, you should uh, learn and yes. try and so what kinds of things you would you know suggest someone to uh look at uh mm-hmm. read uh explore so okay. that it can enrich his own uh still image creation process okay so uh i i don't i don't think that uh, still image is going to die or something like that I think it's it's just going to be there for ages although there are these new types of of representation like we are animation and so on it's it's just going to be there I think it's something that's evergreen and if if someone would love to would love to flourish and would love to you know just make his still images pop I think although there are so many companies doing still images is is it's like uh it's like mainstream right still image in 3D is mainstream so uh so it's there's huge competition and and so on but it comes down to being different if if someone makes image look different in terms of uh, like artistically different or concept is incredible important you know just just make it something avant-garde it's going to pop so so this is something i would suggest everybody to do to do something different it's going to it's going to make those images come out of this mainstream and and i think that there is in in experimental and avant-garde uh type of direction there's no competition because if you do always something differently then then you know there there can't be competition because because you do something just new something different in terms of artistic uh representation and so on so this is what i would suggest to to do in in this kind of mainstream uh mainstream way and okay. and also this can be done in in vr and in any different uh fields but it's the the idea is is what matters just be be different and be have have concept and and you know just make things differently and and does not does not you know let it uh let it be the same as as the all the uh, all the crowd yeah and obviously they need to share it publicly because otherwise <laughs> they, would not, they would not get a phone call yes uh, from a dream client Uh, working towards wrapping the interview up where where can people find you and 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 see work that you do and besides the the blog and the showcase section so where where can they mm-hmm. find you tell us uh well my uh, main three cha- channels are are my website my behance profile and and then i'm on facebook and i just reply a lot so so i would suggest just to visit uh, jacobcheck.net and from there there's uh behind uh, that that's currently it's uh in work in progress but it's, it's going to be launched soon and this is the best way to understand uh, to understand who i am it's going to be very like storytelling so i think it's a good way for people to visit this page first and then then there's going to be links to to different channels like behance and facebook uh so then they can branch and visit the other websites but jacobtech.net is i think the number one for 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 people to explore my passion cool and uh how long do you still have to go with the personal project uh, how, how many months have passed since you started and how many do you have left before you go back to do commercial work full time uh yes so the first project uh which was the marble uh the the one with uh, marble and <laughs> yes <laughs> marble kitchen and rose gold uh elements uh this was uh, released on the uh, 15th march and since since then i'm releasing every 
new projects every three weeks. So, you know, seven projects, three weeks, third and the seventh. Ha ha ha. And <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, next one, which is going to be number six, is uh, coming out on 28. So and then the last one is gonna it's gonna be out some somewhere in July, and a few weeks after that, the final final brochure or book is going to be released. So during the summer, I'm going to finish this series, and after the summer, I'm just going to continue uh, continue doing uh, commercial stuff, and uh, if if I may use <laughs> this uh, audio recording to. You sure uh, can. To uh, say something, I would love to say that uh, by this all, I, I would love to really, you know, just uh, gather passionate people that see things the, the way I see them towards me. Because when I uh, continue to work commercially, I would love to focus on material lighting and so on. So I would love some you know, some really creatives to support me uh, with modeling, ideas, collaboration. So, so uh, get in touch if, if you're, if you're, you know, just passionate. I would love to uh, get to know you. Great. I mean, uh, I love it. People, if you, if you find this interesting, then for sure, uh, call Jacob. Uh, But let him finish the book first. <laughs> <laughs> no, they can call me at, at any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can call you anytime. Cool. Uh, that was really enjoyable, Jacob. I really liked uh, talking to you. And I think uh, there's really valuable information here for uh, my listeners. So thank you very much for taking the time on a Friday uh, to have the session with me. And uh, should be going live pretty soon. Uh, So if you have any final words, this time to, to you know, to, to say them, but otherwise uh, it was a lot of fun. Yes. So thank you so much for inviting me. I enjoyed it so much. And, and I hope this is going to be a very, uh, very nice way for people to listen to new uh, 3D podcasts. Um, I, I, I would ask you something, uh, now it might not get into the, you know, into the final edit of the recording. It might, might, might do get in it, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, who would, who would be someone you would love to hear me interview next? Um, well, my hero is Alex Roman. So <laughs> okay. I know, I know this is, this is a very hard task, but I, I know you are the man. So Alex Roman. <laughs> oh, so I got, the, I, I, I noted that one. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not the first to, uh, I think he's like, uh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's On the, the top of the list. <laughs> Yes, it's it's the core of why why I fell in love with 3D. So it's my main main influence. It's I have I have his book with his own signature. It's something that really inspired me the most in whole my 3D career. And this is maybe this should get into the podcast because I I guess I didn't say it. So Alex Roman is is the core of my inspiration and and you know all all things I do. Cool. I have for many more, I'm sure. Okay, yes. thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you so much as well. You're welcome. That concludes this week's session. Big thanks to Jacob for taking the time to do this interview and the discussions we had even before that. You'll find session highlights, links, and more in session 6 show notes on thespectrum.com. Have a great weekend, everyone. Be good. Do good. <laughs>